Hello and welcome to News Click and People's Dispatch. On the 20th of September, hundreds and thousands of people took to the streets across the world and on social media as part of the global climate, climate strike. To talk more about this, we have with us Tejal Kanitkar of the Energy Environment Program of the National Institute of Advanced Studies in Bangalore in India. Thank you for joining us, Tejal. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, Tejal, we saw, like I said, innumerable people taking to the streets yesterday. And it's been a long time since so many people have gathered on a common issue across the world. And there's been a lot of celebration of this fact. So, uh, what, is your, what is your primary initial take on this? And it, all, it is seen as a sign of hope. At the same time, there are certain aspects which you earlier have also pointed out we need to be cautious on in this matter. So could you just talk about that? Yeah, well, um, there has been a lot of celebration mm -hmm. of the fact that, you know, a strike has, uh, on such an issue, has uh, managed to mobilize so many people, especially right. so many young people. Right. Uh, when there isn't a major conference uh, of parties uh, mm -hmm. that is happening and you have uh, the front page covering climate change, right. uh, you know, without uh, the President of the United States, making some bizarre tweet right. on the issue. Right. So that's, uh, I suppose, uh, that's something that mm -hmm. people are talking about mm -hmm. it. But I think we need to understand what their demands are, mm -hmm. and, what, uh, and who else we are protesting against, right. to come out from the streets on uh, climate change. And one uh, major thing uh, is that one of the major universal demands seems to be climate action now. Mm -hmm. And this is largely really focused on climate change mitigation. Right. Right? So the adaptation, loss and damage, all of the other things that uh, are part of the intergovernmental negotiations on climate change are not really part of the narrative of uh, this movement. Right. It's really focused on climate action in terms of climate change mitigation. Mm -hmm. What uh, what is this? What does this mean? This means uh, you know moving to renewable energy, reducing emissions essentially by moving to greener technologies and uh, uh, maybe also restoring forests and mm -hmm. increasing forest cover. Right. Which is, which is considered now across the board, uh, especially, uh, you know, that is what emerges from these narratives, these are no-brainers. Mm -hmm. So why is it so difficult to achieve this? And who is it that is responsible for not uh, doing these transitions? Right. And in the global north, uh, you know, there are protests against their own governments who are, you know, um, quite rightly dragging their feet on climate action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when a global call like this is uh, is made, and everybody from the developed as well as the developing countries, from poorer nations, etc., also come out on the streets, uh, it is with this large larger understanding that there has to be a shift right. in the way in which we produce energy, in the way in which we use our resources, so that climate change, which is an urgent problem, is checked. However, the issue is not so straightforward. If thing, things are so clear and that, you know, we can, there is technology available now and so everybody should use renewable energy, mm -hmm. uh, seems to be the refrain. Why is it not happening? Right. So are the issues that have stalled action, not stalled, I mean, I'm not saying that these are the only issues that have stalled action, but uh, the more complicated aspects of the problem, have they been resolved? So is, uh, uh, you know, should climate action be taken everywhere simultaneously right, in right. the same manner? Mm -hmm. Climate change is a global problem, so it requires a global solution. Mm -hmm. One country doing something for climate change is not going to solve the problem. Right. Or one set of, you know, one uh, uh, community doing something for climate change is not going to solve the problem. So should everybody be participating in it? But that the entire, act, the, the crux of the negotiations, right from 1992 from the Rio conference, has been that those who are responsible for climate change so far, those who are responsible for all the emissions in the past, mm -hmm. should take a lead. Right. Also because um, uh, they have higher capabilities of addressing the problem. Right. As compared to developing countries who have a lot of challenges in front of them. And uh, while uh, nobody is arguing that we should not be uh, doing things in a matter that in a, in a manner that uh, that uh, also is environmentally sensible. Uh, we do have multiple challenges which are far bigger than those faced by the developed countries. But this sort of differentiation mm -hmm. amongst uh, the developed countries and developing countries, rich countries, poorer countries, or even the rich and the poor in general, right. seems to be completely missing right. from the uh, narrative uh, of uh, this particular movement. The only differentiation that uh, does exist is uh, the one between older people and younger people. Mm -hmm. so, so the the aspect of intergenerational equity, 
Right. It could be between generations is highlighted mm -hmm. as uh, being, uh, uh, you know, violated uh, in the way in which we are doing things. But one major aspect of equity, which is intragenerational equity, mm -hmm. which is equity within uh, populations today, right. is really completely missed. Right. When, when, even when we talk about renewable energy and a transition to renewable energy, who is going to pay for this? Has that question become irrelevant? It has not. And that's one of the major aspects of the problem, which I think is not addressed at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, uh, what you're saying also is that while this movement sort of highlights the universality of the issue, it one does not go into the specifics and you already mentioned equity. And equity is one issue that it does not seriously seek to examine in any way at all. Yes, not at all. I mean, um, one, um, uh, so like I spoke about renewable energy and the transition, uh, is uh, putting all green technology in the public domain mm -hmm. uh, even an aspect of the demands of the protest? Right. It is not. If you look at uh, environmental movements who are backing it, or even big capital that is backing some of these movements, these are not going to be demands that are on their agenda at all. Right. And uh, those who are uh, protesting here in India also seem to have uh, uh, forgotten that this is something that we should be asking for. Right. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, look, given the state of the climate change negotiations now, uh, everything from uh, loans to developing countries to equity flows, uh, investments, uh, you know, FDI, everything seems to be climate funding. Right. Uh, and uh, we are, you, you pay high amounts of money for green technology mm -hmm. uh, to the developed countries to save the planet from a problem that they are more responsible for. Right. And uh, this is really uh, something that is completely not... Uh, in you know in, in, at all a part of uh, the rhetoric, the narrative, the slogan, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, any kind of politics uh, that is uh, that is problematic mm -hmm. to the ruling elite mm -hmm. is really out of the slogans and the narrative of the uh, of the climate debate. So right. you know uh, one wonders why from the right to the left mm -hmm. everybody seems to be uh, you know looking looking now fondly at, uh, at these children who are coming uh, out on the streets and protesting uh, and using methods of protest that are otherwise uh, not very liked. I mean you know a strike mm -hmm. uh, done by uh, transportation workers inconveniences taxpayers. Right. Right. A strike by university teachers um, inconvenience the students. Right. Uh, a strike by students, uh, you know, even for basic uh, facilities, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, you know, looked at uh, as, uh, you know, spoiled brats misusing public money, if not anti national. Right. And yet, here you have the same mode of protest mm -hmm. uh, that is being used, and it is, everybody seems to be applauding it. Right. Uh, one has to wonder uh, if, if that is because it is devoid of any radical content. Right. So simply using radical methods of protest doesn't make the movement itself radical. Right. right? There has to be some radical content to the to the demands mm -hmm. uh, of the movement as well as to the slogans that they then use. Right. And uh, this kind of a movement as it is now mm -hmm. is really asking no hard questions mm -hmm. to those who are responsible for climate change. Right. So in some senses it's maybe like a peace movement which refuses to talk about the economics of war or the military industrial complex or imperialism even and just Absolutely. talks about human behavior so to speak right Absolutely. right so uh, but how would you for instance envision an alternative movement or uh, say a struggle in such a scenario like what would actually be the contours of so global solidarity in a situation like this a global solidarity has to be, uh, of, uh, and I think it is necessary. I'm not saying at all that a global solidarity on climate change is not necessary. And there are efforts that have been made uh, in this really to reach out across uh, borders to talk about equity, uh, not just equity between generations, but equity between nations, right. equity between the working masses. Mm -hmm. uh, of the world, mm -hmm. in some sense, uh, and uh, look at uh, who is affected right. the most, right. uh, what, uh, and how is it that uh, the communities that are vulnerable to climate change, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, small and middle classes, for example, in right. India, mm -hmm. right? They have to. They are. They are dealing with, uh, uh, you know, lack of uh, formal credit. They are dealing with uh, high input costs. They are dealing with uh, no support prices. And on top of that, they have to deal with increasing weather variability. Right. Families who have lost their uh, homes to increasing uh, extreme events uh, across uh, across the world. 
who pays, who compensates? How do you protect one is how do you compensate them for their loss today? Mm -hmm. And how is it that you take care of the fact that they are protected right. from these things in the future? And right. Uh, you know, how do we raise funds for this? How do who pays for it? Right. That is one. And how is it that we mitigate uh, climate change going forward into the future? So the so when you protect here in India for climate action, and when you protect uh, outside the White House for climate action, mm -hmm. this aspect of who is it that should be paying for this? how we should be going about it, mm -hmm. and whether or not in the kind of economic system that we are demanding these changes, uh, this uh, you know this kind of a transition is possible. Right. And so therefore, should our slogans also include the fact that you have, you, you know, you cannot depend on a climate solution that is essentially based on uh, the uh, appeasement of the global elite. Right. So, you know, you, 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 you basically expect them to invest in climate change. Why? Because, uh, and how? How do you expect them to invest in climate change? By making incentives, uh, giving them incentives. Right. Which means, uh, you know, you uh, you appease their uh, their need to look for profit exactly. in saving the planet. And then we, uh, you know, pay them money so that they can invest in technologies that can save the planet. Right. I mean, this is a really convoluted and perverse way of looking at it. So unless we bring politics back into this, mm -hmm. and for politics that really is about putting the, bur the burden on climate change mm -hmm. on those who are more responsible and more capable and those, those who should be taking action on climate change, mm -hmm. we have to bring this back into the narrative right. of uh, the climate uh, strike and then let's call for a global solidarity on that basis. Right. It cannot be simply on the basis of everybody has to do everything everywhere. So exactly. while the United States uh, moves from coal to gas, Afghanistan has to stop uh, producing electricity from coal. I mean that cannot be the basis of global solidarity on climate change. Right. Thank you so much, teacher. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click and People's Dispatch. Thank <laughs> you.